October, I released a video about the opening of Headbolt Lane Station, in which I said I was waiting for what is most definitely an interesting train. The train in question was a Class 777, but this one had batteries fitted to it. A total of seven Class 777-1s have been delivered, which have allowed Merseyrail to expand its network for the first time since the Wirral line was electrified to Chester and Ellesmere Port. Whilst the extension to Headbolt Lane is relatively modest at just under a mile, it will be an important testing ground for the battery units, and will hopefully prove that battery trains can operate reliably. It has been widely reported that the new station cost £80 million, but this figure does include the cost of the battery conversion for the seven units and track and signalling upgrades between Kirby and Headbolt Lane, plus the reconstruction of the bridge over the A506. So far it appears as if there have been some teething problems with last minute cancellations and the service is only operating at half capacity with trains every 30 minutes rather than every 15 minutes. But from what I've been told, there are no fundamental issues with the battery variants, but smaller issues such as software glitches that need ironing out. The 777-1s have been fitted with six 1 ton lithium titanate oxide batteries, which have a combined capacity of 320 kWh, providing a range in passenger service of around 30 miles or 50 km. LTO batteries are considered to have a better life cycle than most other lithium batteries and importantly have a high level of safety. A range of 80 miles or 135 kilometers was reported in December 2022, but I believe there was no ballast on board and the run involved very few stops. It's more likely that a loaded train stopping frequently at stations and traveling at around 50 miles per hour could achieve a range of around 30 miles. But even this conservative estimate opens up some exciting possibilities for future extensions, should the units prove themselves to be reliable, operating an intensive service between Headbolt Lane and Liverpool Central. Before continuing, I feel I should caveat the remainder of the video by saying the routes shown are just suggestions that fall within the 30 mile range and the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority will have to decide which routes it feels merits further examination. I should also say that the routes aren't listed in order of preference. The first route which I personally think should be an obvious choice and an easy win is from Ellesmere Port to Helsby. This relatively modest extension serves in St Elton and would also serve the Stanlow Oil Refinery, with a return trip of approximately 10 miles easily achievable on a single charge. Station platforms may need to be lengthened and realigned to provide step-free access, but the cost would only be relatively modest, with the biggest cost being for the one or two additional units that would be required. But this short extension could provide a further opportunity to test the battery units before a decision is made on longer, more ambitious extensions. The Liverpool City region would, however, like to see trains extended to Warrington Bank Quay, which could open up the possibility of building a new station to serve the huge housing area in Darsbury, which is poorly served by public transport. At 15 miles each way, this could stretch the range of the batteries, and it's not clear if there would be capacity between Helsby and Warrington for additional services without signalling upgrades. Up next is my personal favourite, and one which is being seriously considered with talks being held between the Combined Authority and Transport for Wales on how to finally get trains from Wrexham Central directly into Liverpool. At 27 miles long, an extension from Bidston to Wrexham would require at least one section of third rail for charging. A short section between Wrexham General and Wrexham Central would provide the 15 minutes required for the units to be fully charged. However, with the steep gradients and frequent station stops, it may be the case that a short section of third rail could be required near to Shotton, just to provide a quick top up. Some people have questioned the option of running to Wrexham, as people tend to think of the Borderlands line as a rural North Wales route, but it does serve some sizeable conurbations in both England and Wales, and could bring upwards of 150,000 people within easy reach of Liverpool. If 777s operate to Wrexham Central, then the combined authority would also like to build a new station along the M53 to serve the large Woodchurch estate and Prenton. Transport for Wales are also exploring options for building a new station close to Deeside Industrial Park at which almost 10,000 people work. 
A recent report published by the North Wales Transport Commission has estimated that it could cost as much as 300 million to enhance the line so that two trains an hour could operate from Liverpool to Wrexham, which would require the aforementioned charging points and improvements to be made at Paidswood Cement Works. Freight movements in and out of the cement works currently block the line for as long as 40 minutes, which has a big impact on capacity. Moving to the southeast of Liverpool, another potential extension could see trains operating from Hunts Cross to Warrington Central or to Birchwood. This extension would have the added benefit of serving Widnes and could potentially improve services from two of Warrington's biggest outlying areas into the centre itself, as well as improving links with Liverpool. At 14 miles from Hunts Cross to Birchwood, this extension should be achievable without requiring charging facilities but I'm uncertain as to whether there would be a capacity constraint on this section of the line. Two obvious extensions to the east of the city are from Headbolt Lane to Wigan Wallgate and from Ormskirk to Preston, both of which I think may be prime candidates. Although I believe there are capacity issues between Ormskirk and Preston, which is mostly single track, so infrastructure works will be required even for just two trains per hour to work to Preston. Extending from Headbolt Lane to Wigan may be more straightforward and at only 12 miles from Kirby to Wigan should be achievable without the need for charging facilities. However, the people of Skelmsdale would like to see a station constructed close to the town centre. Skelmsdale is reportedly the largest town in the North West without a railway station and with a population of 38,000 is certainly deserving of a railway connection. However, the length of new line required from Rainford to the town centre wouldn't come cheap, with around 4 kilometres of railway required in addition to the station itself. There is a potential route that could bring trains close to the Concourse shopping centre, but it would mean crossing the M58 and two other major roads. I'm going to take a rough guess that this could cost upwards of £800 million to deliver. There are other possible extensions which may have merit, but I feel the ones I've just outlined may have the best cases. As for which ones should be delivered first, that's for the combined authority to decide. But despite my preference being for the Rex Bisden line, I think that Ellesmere Port to Helsby could be a quick win. I know people are still sceptical about the use of battery trains, and I agree that electrification is always the preferred option. But hopefully the modest extension from Kirby to Headbolt Lane will prove that independently powered electric multiple units can provide a real opportunity to improve services and allow the railway to move away from a reliance on diesel traction. Before I sign off, I'd like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who help make videos like this possible. If you would like to consider supporting the channel, there'll be links in the description below. 